The Hornets season begins on Wednesday and on Monday we find that guard James Booknight was arrested over the weekend on suspicion of DUI. Locked on Hornets host Walker Mail joins us. Walker Booknight had an arrest in college. Obviously he's had some issues here, especially with former coach James Borrego. What is your read on just what might happen with Booknight and the Hornets? I, I don't think there's any way to know about the suspension, right? I'm not sure if there's a suspension that comes about for James Booknight. I don't know what kind of disciplinary action that they're going to take, but we do know that this is someone that was even kicked out of a UConn game when he went back, right? Because that was his alma mater, went to a college basketball game and was doing something in the stands they didn't like. And then we also had the moment where he actually bucked up the James Borrego last year yeah. on the sideline. Now you're starting to see that James Booknight got arrested last night. It's really unfortunate. I, I want the best for Booknight. I want the Hornets to be successful with him at the helm, being a first round pick, somebody that you invested in. But it's unfortunate for somebody that didn't get a lot of playing time last year, and it doesn't seem like he's going to be in the good graces at the beginning of this season. All right, so, you know, we're still awaiting to see what happens with Miles Bridges, both legally and from a basketball standpoint. What is the culture around this team right now? As somebody who's, you know, as inside as they get, not in the locker room with sure. these guys, but what is the general feeling about this team right now? You know, Nick, at media day, I thought that there was a joyous attitude surrounding. I think LaMelo Ball helps a lot with that. I think his personality, it is infectious. This is someone that embraces basketball. He's in the gym constantly. And with him being your leader and also having that personality and that work ethic, I do think that the players here can focus at the topic at hand, which is try to win as many games as possible. Sure, when your brothers and James Booknight is going through this kind of arrest and Miles Bridges, while Miles Bridges, having the felony domestic violence arrest on his record, right? That's something that's really unfortunate for the Hornets before free agency. Obviously, we have to make sure that Michelle Johnson is okay first and foremost. It all affects the Hornets on court product. So having all of those storylines surround this team, despite that, I do think that LaMelo has tried to keep a pretty good attitude along with some of the other players here. It's just, will they have enough firepower for this Hornets team to accumulate enough wins? The Hornets likely going to start the season without LaMelo Ball as he recovers from that grade two ankle sprain. What do you think the outlook is for the first however many games LaMelo Ball is out? They play the Spurs, which is great because this is a team that is going to be in the tanking sweepstakes for generational project or prospect 7-4 Victor Webinyama, right? So the Spurs don't necessarily have winning as their focus. So maybe the Hornets can get that victory. But other than that, this is a team that Steve Clifford has talked a lot about being built to run. I think a large portion of that is having LaMelo Ball on the floor because other than that, it's Terry Rozier, it's Gordon Hayward. You have some guys that can run a little bit, but that's not their identity. So much of their identity is built off of LaMelo's presence. So missing him for maybe a handful of games, I don't know how many, it's going to be tough to adjust to, especially with their lack of backcourt depth. I think that's when you want Gordon Hayward, Terry Rozier, some of your veterans to step up. All right, you know, they, they virtually put nothing around LaMelo Ball in the offseason. Obviously, Miles Bridge is out for the foreseeable future. How concerned are you about this season for the Charlotte Hornets and, and speaking more globally, LaMelo's future in this city? I'm really worried about this season and it all happened so fast, Nick. If you go back to this offseason, right, this was a team that moved on from James Borrego after a 43 win year because they had higher expectations. They wanted to get past the play in tournament. If they did get to the play in tournament, then they didn't want to get blown out. They wanted to find their way into a top six moment or at least have a playoff series rather than just a play in game. And now no Miles Bridges at the beginning. You have James Book Knight have the arrest. Then you have LaMelo Ball going to be missing a little bit of the beginning of the season. It's really tough. And now the expectations that you might once have had for this team, you can't be feeling good, at least at the beginning. All right. Well, LaMelo Ball, he's developing at least into the type of player that right. he can put the team on his back. I mean, we think he's getting to that level individually, what is your outlook for when LaMelo comes back in terms of the type of season he can have? Yeah, this is the positive to focus on, right? Because when you look at LaMelo Ball, this is someone we kind of expect to ascend into that superstardom. 20 points, 7 rebounds, 7 assists last year. I think that he can work on his finishing at the rim. That can increase his points per game average. His free throw shooting is already fantastic. His three-point shooting, to my surprise, has been one of the better marks in all of the NBA's. 
So I do expect LaMelo to individually be a lot better going into his third season. Does he have a chance at all NBA consideration? Even if not, I do think that he's going to be a lock to make the all-star game and that's real improvement. So with all the bad surrounding this team right now, you do at least have a fantastic young basketball player that's only going to get better in LaMelo ball. Walker, once LaMelo ball is back, how do you view the strengths of this Hornets team? Yeah, I, I think LaMelo allows this team to get out in transition a lot more. I think he is a, a transition offense unto himself, and it allows the facilitating to go out there and help Gordon Hayward put him in the best situations possible. Same thing with the Terry Rozier once LaMelo Ball is back. When, with him out, I think you'll see the offense struggle a little bit, but I think having the kind of guy that he is where he makes everybody else better, I'd be really interested to see if there are some Mark Williams minutes with LaMelo Ball, the former first round pick this past year's first round pick. We'll see if Mark Williams can get some run under Steve Clifford, but having him almost break out the ability of others. I think that's what's going to help the Charlotte Hornets team win as many games as possible with everything that's surrounded them this offseason. Uh, this is your father's Eastern Conference, right? I mean, we haven't seen the East kind of this uh, loaded, really, yeah, in a long time. I mean, you just look specifically to Atlanta. They get Murray. Donovan Mitchell goes to Cleveland. The Hornets really didn't do much, and they lose their leading scorer in Miles Bridges, we think, for a while. Where did all that movement leave Charlotte? Yeah, that, that's a great point because you do see some of the teams that you just mentioned go out and get better. And, Nick, those were playing teams last year. So if you did not get better this offseason in, in the Eastern Conference, that means you got better last year in the offseason, right? When we saw Chicago go after DeMar DeRozan, and they had – quite the regular season. You know Philadelphia got even better and 76ers were always going to be a championship contender. You go down the list and all of a sudden you see the Hornets as the first team that didn't do anything besides bring back Cody Martin, but they didn't make any new free agent acquisitions. It's really going to hurt, especially with the way that the Eastern Conference got better. So it's going to be an uphill battle. They're going to have to rely on internal improvement in order to see them get in that play-in tournament, maybe even beyond. Yeah, that player development now uh, the task of Steve Clifford, who's returned as coach, how much influence do you think he will have on getting this team to actually play better defense? And are you concerned at all that they'll lose kind of some of that offensive momentum from last yeah, year? Yeah, this is also your father's Hornets, too, because <laughs> yeah. Steve Clifford is back. So it might even be exactly your, your father's right. Charlotte Hornets. And I do think that he is going to have an impact on the defense. I think because he's been such a great teacher on that end of the floor, and it's followed him wherever he's gone. Even in Charlotte, the first go around, you saw this team get a lot better. They didn't turn the ball over on offense all that much. You see him go to Orlando. The only way that they were able to win a game against the then championship Toronto Raptors, the champion Toronto Raptors, right, as Kawhi Leonard would lead that team. Magic got a game in the postseason. It was really because of their defensive effort taught by Steve Clifford. I'm, I'm hoping that he can apply that here to this Charlotte Hornets team and guys can pick up on that because of how much they struggled last year. I, I think just having the knowledge that Steve Clifford brings will enhance the play on that end for some of these young guys. I think the projected win total for the Hornets about 37 or 38. I mean, fans expected m many more right. wins than that coming off the last few years. What has to go right for the Charlotte Hornets to, let's say, finish ov over 500, be solidly in a play-in or even compete for a playoff series? It's tough. <laughs> Nick, I, I, wanna, I want to see the vision. It, it's really tough. I think what has to happen is you have to have the very ceiling of LaMelo Ball's improvement. He has to be a player that could possibly be an all NBA type player, which is possible, but he, but he has to hit that. I think PJ Washington needs to, needs to show some more offensive responsibility. Maybe he can put the ball on the floor a little bit more rather than just be a high level three and D guy. And I expect his defense to continue at, at a nice pace. I think the other thing is Gordon Hayward has to stay healthy. I think he showed in the preseason, the half court, uh, half court offense, especially still a very effective player but he needs to play more than 60 games. And if that's the case, I think that's your shot to get above 500 and reach the expectations you might have right after you fire James Borrego. All right, let's talk about week one at the Spurs Wednesday, home against the Pelicans Friday at Atlanta on Sunday, all likely without LaMelo Ball. How do you see things playing out? 
Yeah, I, I think the Hornets have a shot against San Antonio because the Spurs are going to be tanking. They made a lot of moves, right? You just mentioned DeJounte Murray. DeJounte Murray, they trade him to the Atlanta Hawks, and you, you get first-round picks. Yeah. Not anything that can help you this year. So against San Antonio, I do think that this is going to be a way, uh, a game that maybe the Hornets can win. The Hawks is going to get a lot more tough. I will say, if you wanted to catch the Atlanta Hawks at some point in the season, then you would want to when Trey Young and DeJounte Murray are yep. trying to figure it out. There are still legitimate questions as far as two ball dominant guards playing alongside one another. How do they figure it out? So a couple of those games, I do think that the Hornets have a pretty good shot even with LaMelo Ball possibly missing both of those games and certainly sometime. I will right, we'll see what they have in uh, Zion Williamson down in New Orleans on yeah, Friday night. Yeah, that's I remember true. last time he played right. this uh, arena in college anyway. It was pretty good. Walker Mail from Lockdown Hornets podcast. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it.